All right, welcome back to the channel once again. Today we have a little electrical diagnosis on this basic analog blower motor resistor. Now this is a really basic, reliable, cheap design that Ford used for many, many years, many decades actually, in their vehicles because it just worked. Now there's one problem with it though, and that is that it has a lot of exposed metal here. You can see all this exposed metal. It may have some zinc coating on it, but believe me, it does not protect it very well. This thing gets bolted into the HVAC case so the blower motor air can pass over it and keep it nice and cool and reliable. The problem with that is, is that there's a lot of condensation inside the HVAC case, a lot of humidity, a lot of different temperatures inside of there, and all of that water condensates, all those water vapors condensate on these metal parts, thereby corroding them. As you can see here, this right here is the same blower motor resistor, but it's about 14 years old. And you can see how the thing literally just falls apart after a while. Now the most common symptom associated with something like this where it just corrodes and starts breaking apart is that your blower motor will work, but only on high. And the reason being is that all the rest of the speeds, medium high, medium low, and low, all go through here as it gets stepped down in voltage coming through here. Now on the newer vehicles, they use a resistor card like this right here, and you can see it's coated to help prevent that. But on the older vehicles, you're gonna have this issue over and over again. It's gonna happen eventually. It's just the way it's designed in there. Now it does take a while, but since these are so common, they were used for seven, so many years, there's a lot of these failures out there. So today we're gonna go through and show you how this works inside of here. We're gonna go through each one of these components on here. And then we're gonna go over to the electrical schematic and show you how it integrates with the rest of the system. And then we'll come back over here with the digital voltmeter and we'll start doing some testing on here. Now the way this works is the main body ground comes in through this terminal right here, comes up and the first place it goes through, the first piece it goes through is a thermal fuse right here. And the idea behind this is because each one of these is such a low resistance, they can actually get quite hot. The idea is to prevent them from getting too hot and if they do malfunction for whatever reason, this will actually pop, opening the circuit and thereby stopping the, the current flow and hopefully preventing a fire. After it goes through here and everything's okay, it comes down and around to right here. And this is just a, just a jumper up and over to our first resistor right here. Now once it goes through our first resistor, we do have a lower voltage on this side. So at that point we can output that, as you see right here, down to another one of our terminals. And that would be the medium high. Now if you want medium low, which would be number two on your dial, we need to go through another resistor so that current keeps coming through, jumps over to this resistor right here, flows through that, drops more voltage, and then there's another output. And you can see it right there on the back side here. Then if you want it on low, we're gonna have to go through all three of these so we can drop that voltage down low enough so the blower's nice and slow. So it'll go through and it'll jumper over to this one right here. And then it'll output over, let me get a better view of that, right here. So you can see each one of these has their own output on it. So one, two, three, and then we have the main ground coming in. Now, how does this all work together with the switch? Well, let's go over the wiring diagram and I'll show you exactly how it all comes together. Okay, let's go over the wiring diagram real quick so we get a better sense of how this all comes together and makes these different speeds on here. Now, of course, up here is your blower motor resistor we were talking about in the bench there, and it's directly wired into the function selector switch on the dash. Over here is our body ground coming in, so everything has a ground to work. And then over here is the output side of this circuit and that feeds the ground side of the blower motor over here. The power that's coming in comes from a fuse in the blower motor relay to provide power to the positive side to the blower motor, and we're just controlling the ground side. So yes, this is a ground-based switch on here because they tend to be more reliable, okay? So we're just controlling the ground side. 
Now the basic idea here is that we're adding resistance to the ground, thereby dropping the voltage. So the more resistors you add, the more voltage you're going to drop through them and the lower the blower speed is going to be. So we're going to go through all of these circuits on here from low to high and you'll get a better understanding of how this works. And this is pretty much how all the systems are on the Ford vehicles that have manual climate control. So let's start off on low, which is number eight right here. You can see it right here, number eight. And you can see inside the function selector switch, it goes nowhere. And the reason being is it wants the ground that's going output on this side to the blower motor to go through all these different resistors in here. Now resistors in series like this add up. So this is about 2.4 ohms of resistance. It's a big voltage drop through here. And it's going to make that blower motor speed the lowest it can go. So the ground comes in. It goes over here through our thermal limiter right here. And it goes through each one of these, okay, which again add up, before coming out on the output side and finally over to the blower motor. Now on medium high, um, medium low actually, which would be number two, is 24 on here. Okay, so we're flipping over to 24. So what, what's happening here is the ground's coming in. It's going up through a thermal limiter. It's going through this resistor and this resistor. Okay, so that's two of them together, about one ohm. And then it can finally exit down out through pin 24 over here and again out to the blower motor. Now on medium high, which is 25 right here, our ground comes in, okay, goes up through our limiter, our thermal fuse, goes through one resistor, and you can see that's a very small amount of resistance to it, and it can exit down out this circuit over here to 25, flicked over, and out to our blower motor. Now on high, you'll be able to see here on number 11, just how it bypasses this whole um, circuit and resistance card up here and why it still works even though this is damaged or has failed. Okay, so on high, the ground comes in, goes over, and it back feeds over through to this function selector switch on pin 11. So when you flick it over to high, you're selecting number 11 on here. So we're going to jump through to here go up and over, and we're gonna give that perfect ground to the blower motor. It's gonna go as fast as it can based on the incoming voltage. Now you're probably wondering, um, isn't the ground coming in through here and still going through here? Well, yes, yes it is, but guess what? Current is gonna take the path of least resistance, which of course is this ground circuit right here. So it's gonna go right on through and it's gonna provide that perfect ground and totally ignore all the resistance in this circuit. It's kind of the same idea. If you had a problem in this circuit and then you overlaid a wire to the same output side, your component that you had a failure on is gonna work just fine now, no matter how bad the wiring is in this circuit because you're providing that perfect ground to it, okay? So that's basically how it works. Let's go over to the component and we'll show you how to test it on the bench. Now the way you diagnose one of these is actually quite simple. You don't need no wiring diagram. You just look in the back side here. And the first thing we're gonna do is find the input side. And remember it's gonna be on the one side of the thermal fuse that does not attach to a resistor. So this side is a resistor and this side goes right to one of our pins right there on the bottom side. Remember, this is our protection device. Everything has to pass through here. So that's gonna be our ground coming in. So we can go ahead and just put one multimeter lead on there. We're gonna have our multimeter set on ohms, of course. And then we're simply gonna go around to the rest of the pins on here, and we're gonna to touch them to make sure they have continuity. Okay, so we're gonna get this out of the way. Go to that one right there. 1.1, 1.0. 1 Okay, so we have continuity there through one of the resistors. This one right here shows we have continuity through all three of them because it is such a high ohm rating. And then this one right here shows we have resistance through the first one on there. 
Now what this does show is that each one of those resistors inside of there is okay, that the circuitry through to the thermal fuse is okay, and it also shows how each one of these, uh, the resistance is achieved and the voltage drop and of course your blower speed drops uh, based on each one of these resistance values in here. So on the first one here, you have one ohm, that was our middle or medium low speed. This right here was our lowest reading. So that would be the medium high speed because that's the lowest voltage drop. And then this one right here, 2.4, would be the biggest voltage drop. So that would be our low setting on there. Now, what I like to do, that's a good test right there. I like to go ahead same thing in the back side here though. Test thermal fuse. Boom, you know right away. And then the same thing going through here. You can literally clip onto here and you can clip onto this side of the resistor right here. Okay? And we're getting that same reading just in the back side here. And then we're going through. Let's go through another resistor. Let me get to touch this right here 1.0. So that's two resistors equal 1.0 because in series, resistors add up their value on there. Now we're going to go through a third resistor. You can see it right here. This can be our low output, 2.4, 2.5. So you can see how it works by going through all these different resistors on here. And that's the idea to make sure everything has continuity through here. And if so, then the blower speeds should work. Now, one last tip I can give you, and it's a very important tip, is if you find out that your blower motor resistor has failed, either you pull it out and it looks like this, or you go through my diagnostic steps and you find out, yes, it truly has failed, you don't want to plug in your new one from the parts store and let it dangle on the floor in excitement because you want to go test the different speeds on there and make sure you fixed it because your excitement is going to be short-lived. These are designed to be bolted into the HVAC case and all that air from the blower motor passing over them to keep these coils cool. These can fail within 10 to 15 seconds if they're not in that airflow stream in there. The thermal limiter will pop on there and yes, the parts store will know it because it's gonna let up the goo here, okay? So they're gonna know it and you're gonna, you're gonna double the cost of this repair. So if you do find out you need a new one, take the time to take the old one out bolt this one in and plug it in and then test it out, I'm telling you. Especially if you run across one of these in your travels and these, these, these resistor cards, they call them, these will fail almost instantly, okay? And I've also had a few of these where they'll go in, they'll do what I said, they'll plug it in without having it in the case, they'll put it back into there, it'll work just fine for a week or two, and then this thing will fail prematurely. Okay, so just don't do it in general. That's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.